Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like Wizards and Dragons, and let's break some more stuff. So this is sort of a part two to my earlier video on Tri-Catch and uh, GML 2.3. So in addition to Tri-Catch and finally, there is one more keyword that has been added related to, uh, to error handling, and that is the throw keyword. Um, in, in previous versions of GameMaker, you may be familiar with a function called show error. And that would that would take a string and a boolean that would determine whether or not the program automatically quits, and it would um it would show a uh, an error message, just like you'd get if you tried to take like the log of a negative number or uh, do what I'm doing here and concatenating a string and a real number or something like that. I turned IDE animations off. Let me turn those back on. Um, disa disable IDE transition animations. It's good if you're. It's it's good if Game Maker is running slowly to turn those off, but it's um can be a little bit weird if you're uh, if you're doing something like trying to record your screen. Anyway, so I am going to go back to my old uh, deliberately broken string concatenate function, and I'm going to do some things. Let's say if is string value one, then we are going to show an error. And let's make it automatically force quit the game if that happens, because this is in the draw event, and if I don't, it's just going to keep happening. Uh, let's do the same thing for value two, and then if if no errors happen, we will simply do what we actually want and uh, concatenate the values. So let's run this. This is going to break immediately before anything even gets drawn. Um, error in action number one for draw event of object, value one, not a string. So this is an error message, which we have seen before. Uh, this is formatted slightly differently than it used to be. In previous versions of... I just tapped my microphone and I hope that did not deafen anybody. If that was actually audible, then the future self will just edit it out. This used to be formatted differently. Show error messages used to actually contain the stack trace, as well as the, uh, as well as the error contents, and it no longer does that. This has limited use now. Uh, like I said, if you want to, you can have it show the message but not force quit the game, uh, which will probably work here because this isn't a terminal this isn't a terminal error with errors or anything like that, but again, it's in the draw event, and since the draw event happens 60 times a second without stopping, it's just going to keep happening. But there is something else you can do, and that is throw an error instead of using the old uh, using the old message box. You cannot try and catch one of those show errors that you uh, generate yourself, by the way, but you can try catch one of these. So if left unchecked, if you let this escape out into, into the main method of the program or whatever it is to use an analog from other programming languages, this will show basically the same thing, although I believe this error message will contain the call stack. Yeah. Unable to find a handler for exception value one is not a string. No call stack, which is a weird thing for it to say because that's exactly what this is right underneath it. Maybe it's referring to something else that besides this error message or something. And you can try catch these. So uh, that that is going to happen in the second and third things that I'm that I am trying to draw. Um, instead of drawing the the result of the uh, string concatenation, we will just say draw the error message. And I'm going to do that for down here as well. Just draw it in the correct place. If I was really being careful about checking every exception, I would, um, about catching every possible exception, rather, I would do it around the first one as well, but this is a tutorial and I don't feel like typing that, and I know that's not go ever going to cause an error. So let's do this. Okay, so we've caught the exception. We've got hello world with no space, and then we've got a couple error messages underneath it. Value one is not a string, and value two is not a string. Um, you'll notice that in, in the case of this one here, neither value one nor value two is a string, but since it uh, since it checks value one first, since it looks to see if that's a string or not, and then if it isn't, it, it escapes with the error message. Uh, it never gets to it never gets to looking at value two. Throw will immediately uh, return you out of the function or the um or the event the object event if you uh, if you invoke one, much unlike an actual return statement or a, uh, a an exit statement. Is exit even still useful? Since I believe you can use return in um, in actual object events now, they just won't return the value to anything. Return is cool. You don't actually need to you don't actually need to return a value. Uh, if it just sees the return statement, it will um, it will exit whatever function it's inside. 
it didn't used to be that way, but at some point they uh, at some point Yo-Yo Games uh, made Game Maker decided to make Game Maker return statements work like they do in any other programming language. Where was I? So errors. Uh, you can throw anything. You can throw you can throw a string. I most commonly throw strings. You can make this an error code. You can say like negative one, negative two. You can have uh, an enum value for like string errors, and you can say. Let's make the success value a one and the error message anything besides one. Uh, you can throw this since this is an integer at its core anyway. Anything that is a valid data type in GameMaker, you can throw. I want to say you can even throw undefined, although that doesn't really make any sense and that's not really useful information. By default, errors in GameMaker will, um, will contain structs with a message, a long message, a script, and a call stack. You can throw objects. Oops, no semicolon in there. Uh, you can throw objects, you can throw your own lightweight objects. I have not talked about lightweight objects or structs as they're officially called uh, yet, but curly braces like this with va with uh, variables followed by a colon followed by the value, those are, uh, those are basically proto-objects. And now that we are catching an object, now that we are catching an object, we can, um, we can use the members inside it. So the error message is now a variable of the uh, of the error that we threw. Um, if you want to include a call stack, uh, the oops, the function debug get call stack is a uh, is a thing, which you can use. Uh, let's follow that by commas, even though we don't need it, just because it looks nice. The call stack will be an array, so if we want to draw it, if we want to concatenate that onto a string, we will need to um, we will need to cast it to a string first. Otherwise, we'll just have the same error that we were trying to catch in the first place, which is oddly poetic. Okay, so now you see the error message, and you can see the line of code that it originated in, and um, and the the scripts that led up to that point in time. So this is pretty versatile. Throwing your own errors isn't something that you're necessarily going to do often. It's probably going to be used most by people who write extensions for other people to use in GameMaker, and they want to have more control over possible error messages that could come up if they want to return specific information with the errors. I have been known to be a bit of a fan of Scribble, the text renderer. A potential use would be if you try to draw text with a font that doesn't exist or something, it would throw its own error. Lots of potential fun to be had. Okay, I believe that's everything. There is one more function related to error handling, and that is... I can't remember the name of it, so I'm just going to look in here. Exception unhandled handler. This is a function for dealing with, um... This is a function for dealing with error messages. If you want to override the default error message, you can use this. You can do whatever you want with it. This is a function that makes my JavaScript senses go off hard because you pass a function to the exception handler instead of a value or a, a game maker resource or something like that. In this example here, it looks like it's just logging the message to one, the, the, uh, the debug console down here at the bottom, and two, to a file. Be careful with that. As I mentioned before, if you have an error that keeps happening, uh, if, if you have an error that doesn't crash your game and it keeps happening, um, and it happens in the step or event or the draw event or something like that, it's going to go off 60 times a second, and then you're gonna have, you're, you're just gonna have a complete mess in the console of error messages that are probably identical, and then your crash log is going to be like 10 gigabytes because it just kept rolling. That's an exaggeration. Plain text is takes up no space at all. Actually, it won't do the second thing because it'll delete the crash log if it already exists, and that's going to be, well, that's its own can of worms. Anyway, if anyone wants me to talk about exception, unhandled handler or whatever it was, I will do that in a future video, although I'm not planning on doing it because it's probably a really obscure function that not a lot of people are going to be using and I'd rather spend my energy talking about other things. And um, at the end of the day, I'd much rather try catch my exceptions instead of letting them escape to the to the root of the program and causing the unhandled exception handler to go off. But that's it. If you want the code for this, it will be linked in the video description. I believe, yes, I created a separate branch for this, um, for this since this is really a part two of the, uh, the try catch video. Let's throw your own errors. 
Uh, what else? I recently started a Patreon, so if you want to join the fun, links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I like wizards, I like dragons, I like making games. I try to post uh, one or two of these videos uh, a week, sometimes more. My name is Michael, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Indie Punch and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and to force me to try and pronounce them out loud, head over to the Patreon page in the video description and join the fun. I am the all-time worst salesman ever.